here's the river where I've walked down. And uh, I hope this shows up under the dark here of the bridge. But uh, it's a real pretty river. Nice flowing water. And uh, there are a lot of fish in here. I'm going to put a little thing up in the middle of this video talking about this river and uh, how ecologically diverse it is because there are a lot of uh, fish in here and a lot of different species and lots of uh, different plant life and insect life and it's just really a wonderful river. But let me get set up here and let's catch a couple of Helgramites and we'll walk on down there a little bit and do some fishing with them. Now what you want to do when you're trying to catch these Helgramites, you want to find a place where there's flowing water and flat rocks. And This is doing it by hand. You can also use the same. But I'm just going to turn these rocks over. This is a good one. Now I'll get you a better shot of this. <laughs> you can see that's a pretty good size one. And that's a, a real good bait. These things have a real leathery uh, body to them. And a lot of times I'll catch three, four, or five fish just off of one of them. And right here on their tail, they have these little sucker things, almost like a, an octopus. You can see it's trying to grab me there with its tail also. And there was a little, I don't know what that little baby Helgramite or something was there on it. But anyway, these are the larvae of a Dobson fly, which is a nocturnal fly that comes out at night. But this Helgramite lives under the rocks in the uh, river for usually about three years. And at the end of that three years, it will crawl out on the bank and it'll find itself a good place under a log and it'll stay there and go through its metamorphosis and uh, become the Dobson fly. And then the Dobson fly will fly to some limb overhanging the water and lay eggs under a leaf. And uh, those eggs will hatch and fall back into the water. And that's the complete life cycle of the Dobson fly. But I'm not going to catch many of these today. I didn't even bring anything to put them in. But normally I'll have a container and I'll catch three or four of them. And I'll walk uh, and wade down the river for a little while. And until I run out of bait. And at the next rapids, I'll look for some uh, flat rocks and, and of course flowing water. And I'll stock up again and get two or three more and then continue on the day fishing. 
So there you have it, a Helgramite. I want to give you some better pictures of it uh, here in just a little bit. Stay tuned. Yeah, there we go. There, that gives you a real good look at this. That would be a monster if it was in a 1950s movie <laughs> caused by uh, military atomic experimenting. <laughs> and all of us 11 year olds would pile in there and pay our 35 cents to watch it. But there he is, Mr. Helgramite. Look at those pinchers on there. They are capable of drawing a little bit of blood. So, there's Mr. Helgramite up close. Hope you ain't too scared. Okay, <laughs> now this is the way I'm going to fish this today. Let me see if I can get out of the sun. This is a number six weedless hook. And I like to use weedless hooks when I'm in a stream because there are just all kinds of places for you to get hooked and hung up. This Helgramite has a collar right here behind its head. And I'm going to run my hook right under that collar. And then I'm going to put that weedless wire in place. And that's all I have on my line is that Helgramite. So uh, let's go see if we can't give this a cast and catch Now something. here's an old bridge. And there you, there's a lot of, I don't know, two or three old bridge uh, concrete things down through this river in the next mile and a half. This used to be a real big coal mining area. And uh, a lot of these bridges were used to get coal out to where they could uh, load it and haul it. But right now what it's done is that concrete embankment over there, not embankment, but that slab that's fallen down. Uh, usually when you have running water after a rain or something, it'll dig out around those kind of things. And so what I'm going to do is throw this Helgramite up ahead of that so that the uh, current will take the Helgramite down toward that concrete. Now when you're fishing this Helgramite, you want to keep him moving because those two little octopus sticky kind of things on their tail will get you hung up. Let's get up here and try another little cast. Uh, you can see always keep this kind of stuff cleaned off your bait or you're not going to catch anything. You see him see him catching me with uh, those little tail things. He's not wanting to let go of anything. Okay, got him cleaned up. Always fish with uh, your hook with none of that kind of junk on. Let's try one more cast and see if something's waiting over on the back over there. Maybe that wasn't washed out as much as I thought. That wasn't a very good cast. He had hung up on the bottom, see? He'll grab the bottom, and you'll think your line's moving, but it's not. There, that's a good cast. That's what we want. Well, there's nothing there today. Let's try one more back up this way. Not a good cast. Let's do it again. 
I'm kind of timid about getting in a tree over there. I don't like catching squirrels unless it's hunting season. There we go. See there? Just that fast. All right. Now don't forget river fish aren't going to be big giants like you catch out of some reservoir. Now this is a sought after fish around here. This is called a red eye. It's a, it's a member, it's a member of the sunfish family. And this is a good size one. Actually, they don't get too big. They're pretty fish. So there you have it folks, that is a red eye bass. And uh, that's a good eating fish right there. There are a lot of these in this river. And I told you that I'd be able to, whoa, they always had to get in that last kick. I told you that I'd be able to catch three, four, or five fish off of one Helgramite. Of course, it didn't happen that time. He had to knock it off. But uh, there you are. That's a member of the uh, bass family. Well, it's actually the sunfish family. And, uh, that can that consists of uh, your largemouth bass, your spotted bass, and uh, several others. But anyway, I'm not collecting these for food today, so it's your lucky day because you'd be a good eating fish. But I'm just going to let you go, buddy, so go back out and play. There you go, swimming off all healthy and real good. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. There's this one. He's a little smaller than that other one, but he's still good. So, let's bait up with this and see if we can't catch us another something else. I want to show you something else out in this river. Right now, I'm walking down beside a golf course. And this place is just full of golf balls. Can you see them down in the water? I hope this shows up. There's one there and there's one here. And I'm going to walk back up here a little bit. I don't know any real avid golfers right now or I'd collect these. There are two balls. And there are two more up there. And there's another one, one up there, two up there, three, four up there. I could collect right here in this one little hole, and isn't that a pretty one? I could probably collect, and I might do it on the way out, but right in this hole right here, about 12 of these balls. Let me put that there as a, as a marker. But I used to bartend at this little old bar in a town called Leeds, Alabama and it was real close to another golf course and a lot of golfers came in there but every time I came down here to go fishing I would collect up 15 or 20 of those golf balls and uh I'd take them down there to the bar, and when they came in, I'd give them those balls. And uh, they had these places back up there at the golf course. You've probably seen them. You can put some balls in there and scrub them up and down, and it cleans them up real good. But uh, they were real appreciative of that. 
If I had any close friends that were golfers right now, I'd sure collect those up for them. But, I'm going to put this other Helgramite on here. As small as he is, he's still good bait. So I have him on there. And one reason you want to use light line, I mean, besides this being a small body of water as it is, is uh, because you need to be able to cast this real light bait with only this hook on here. Now, I do carry some bobbers a couple and a few sinkers normally because there are situations where I'll put that on there but right now let's take a little stroll down here and see if we can find another hole okay we just came upon what I call a textbook place to fish in a creek where you have a current going by and over here it's creating an eddy where that water swirls around and also down past those areas you'll get some uh, hiding places for fish but I'm going to throw this over in here I'll have to throw a little harder that smaller Helgramite. The less weight of it makes it a little harder to throw. So we'll give it some up. Well, <laughs> doggone, as hard as it was to get that Helgramite, a little old uh, shell cracker got it from me. Well, let's walk down here and see if we can get another one. They're just making me a liar out of how many fish you can catch with one of them today. There's some flat spot. Let's see if we can. Well, there's a little baby one. He's too small. see any mama down there either I just wanted to tell a little story believe me it's true there have been two times once in this river and once up at the Nantahala in uh, western North Carolina that I turned over a rock and there was a snake under it. <laughs> That's a little bit of a charge for you. I don't worry about snakes but you're not expecting one to be under a rock. You're turning over. But it does happen. Okay, there's another place down below some riffles. I'm walking upstream now. If you haven't noticed, I changed direction. But there's some deeper, slower moving water. That's my third Helgramite. Well, I'm kind of winded walking against that current. I want to tell you, that was 
I told you I used to go down there about a mile and a half and uh, walking back up going down and fishing and walking back a lot of times carrying a string or full of catfish or something <laughs> I had gotten into a day's workout walking back against that current but anyway, I caught that third Helgramite, and I'm going to fish it, and then I'm going to call it a day. I will have accomplished what I set out to do. Let's throw that out there and see if we can get something. Well, I got a strike. That's one thing about river fishing. It's pretty quick you go and fish these holes you don't spend all day looking for where the fish are you know where they are see <laughs> there's another red eye Oh, he got away, but he didn't get my Helgramite, so I get to hook another one anyhow. There we go. Threw that right over in the honey hole. I think that one got my... Yeah, if those little brim, they're boogers. They love to get that bait. When I was down in Tampa, they said the sheep's head were like that. Well, boy, these, these bram will tear you up bait-wise. But anyway, I'm going to hike up through here and just look up the creek. But I'm going to try to get out of here. I'm a pretty good little piece from the hat from my uh, my motor home and I don't want to get stuck out and too bad boy I should have had a Helgramite there that is a one beautiful place there You've got two places of current coming together and some still water in back of it those red-eye bass they lay in ambush they're waiting they hide and wait for something to come by and they dart out and grab it. So that's the deal with them. But anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed this little trip up the river today and enjoyed seeing those monster Helgramites. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.